But substantively, what I think we will uh, be focusing on is in many ways um, strengthening uh, migration as a key element, both in the achievement of the sustainable uh, development goals, the Agenda 2030, uh, and in the um, pursuit, the realization of the Secretary General's uh, um, our common agenda vision uh, for the United Nations uh, community. Um, and a number of ways in which we will do this is by reinforcing the essential need, need for migrants to be part of truly inclusive societies, particularly as we build back from the pandemic. You mentioned uh, access to vaccines. That's obviously the totemic uh, um, uh, uh, aspect of that inclusive um, building back. I think that um, places where people um, already face challenges um, getting a visa or a visa waiver to, to travel, for instance, um, are now also the places that are under-resourced in terms of vaccine access. And they're also the places where it might be difficult to arrange a test within, um, within 72 hours, increasingly now 48 hours, even 24 hours for the United States. All of these ways in which we're now trying to um, restrict movement or to manage movement in response to, to, to variants and impose greater surveillance. Um, all of those ways will, will squeeze, especially people who um, are uh, from uh, countries in the Southern Hemisphere um, or who just have less access to resources. There's a lot of talk, a lot of pressure being put on the governments to open. ECOWAS is looking at it also and trying to see how they can open um, safely. So I, I, I think having the testing facility, hopefully as the tests get cheaper, you know, originally it was very expensive to do a test. Now they are getting cheaper. And I think also with time, possibly the vaccines too might get cheaper, more readily available. So uh, yeah, things are better. But I will emphasize that since COVID-19 knows no borders. So whatever decisions, for instance, Ghana takes, it has to be in collaboration with the other countries. So I, I think COVID-19 has this negative side, but its positive side too is that it gives opportunities for, for instance, West Africans to work together more closely. There's an urgent need for West Africans. If you don't work together closely, like we've been doing, we all take our national policies. It's hard for it to work if we don't take a more regional kind of um, approach because at the borders, who is crossing in? Togo, Togolese are moving into Ghana, Ghanaians are moving to Togo and Nigeria. So we have to take a regional, you know, approach. If we think through the priorities for the next six months, uh, it's a little bit easier to see where there can be international agreement. So we talked earlier about this sort of shift towards the vaccination requirements. And I think right now there's a lot of interest in um, how you make sure that the different systems for verifying vaccination requirements are interoperable. They work with one another. And that's an area where we're seeing um, a dialogue, at least, between different uh, countries and regions. So not just thinking about mutual recognition, but also, you know, what standards to get behind. So, you know, that maxim that, you can have something fast, cheap, or good, but you pick two. You can't have all three. I think it's a little bit like that when it comes to the sort of mobility, pandemic mobility architecture. So you can have something streamlined, you can have something safe, or you can have something equitable. You have to pick two of those. And sadly, I think it's going to be equity that loses out. So we need to be thinking really, really hard about what we can do to mitigate that what we can do to make sure that sure countries can have vaccination requirements, but make sure that they have a complementary system, a backup system for people who are from countries where vaccine access is, 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 is tricky. Um, how do you make sure that sure, you have digital as your default so that it's streamlined, but there are also systems where people can um, uh, just use paper-based certificates, 
but also just if they're places, people from the United States where we just still have our little UDC paper slips to prove our vaccination, um, they're still able to, um, to get those verified. So you might have digital first, but then you have a human providing, providing the backup in most of these, most of these systems. So I think that, um, streamlined, uh, parsimonious, uh, efficient, digital first are all going to be the sort of words, um, of the future. Um, but we need to make sure that we don't forget about equity as far as possible.